Hello, everyone. All right, so we're back. Uh, as I said, uh, we're going to do a test uh, run of the oven. Uh, this is my friend Mike. Hello. He is the owner of Brick and Mason Pizza. Uh, they do all kinds of mobile catering for uh, events and any type of celebrations you guys are having based out of Long Island. Mike, any Neapolitan uh, pizza? Neapolitan pizza. All right. Uh, here's a quick clip of uh, what Mike does. Uh, his trailer setup, obviously that is a lot more legit than this thing, but who best to tell us if this is worth it We'll see how it goes. a pro. All right, so what are we making here today? We're going to do just a regular margarita pie, just to keep it basic to see if uh, the oven's good. I'm going a little smaller than normal, just so it fits in the oven better. Yeah, so as I mentioned last time, this is a 12-inch uh, opening for the oven, so you got to be mindful of the size. So right now, these are the temps that we're running at. Lower temp is at around 750, I believe. Upper is 800. Um, so we have ran a few pies in here, and Mike had a few kind of critiques on this oven so far. Mike, what were some of the issues or just challenges you are seeing? Um, so far, the bottom cooks perfect, which is nice. But what's happening is the top isn't hot enough, so the cheese is staying in there a little too long, and the fat is separating from the actual cheese while the crust isn't getting enough color. So, let's see if we uh, solve that problem with our last... Are we trying to start stop or... Oh, you know what? We probably should. So if you just stop. Yeah, and then start again. And it goes into preheating. So, this looks weird that we're doing this, but what we seem to be noticing, now what Mike noticed is that the top coil it turns off when it reaches temperature, but it needs to kind of keep going. There's no real way to just force it to stay on. Um, and then it just creates a strange kind of temperature. Too much steam is staying in there. And it's just kind of uh, affecting the way that the cheese is melting. So, I mean, we, an ideal. we ran a few samples through it. Plus, uh, I keep hitting the back wall. I guess what you're seeing here, Mike, if you want to describe, like, what's going on with the cheese. So, actually, I think I shut it, I turned it lower right. on the last one, and then turned it up once I put the pizza in. Um, so that's how I got better coloring on it. But it still wasn't enough that the cheese was in there for too long, um, which then causes that fat separation and that weird look to the cheese. But as far as, like, the crust and the actual, like, dough... Yeah, so far, baking, that seems to be like on point. Like if you want to take a peek in there now, the cheese is already at that point where I should be taking it out for it to be a Neapolitan style. Yeah. So you can see the cheese bubbling. That's usually a sign to get it out. But the crust is still so pale. Right. And even rotating it wouldn't help it because it's kind of even heat throughout the whole oven. You can see the, the top coil right now, it's cycled off. And so, all the steam that's, yeah. I mean, it's coming out, but maybe it needs a little more steam to come out. So only if there was a way to kind of, kind of force the top coil to stay on. I mean, we tried it where we had it off uh, at a lower temperature for the upper temp, and then as soon as we put it in, we turned it up again. And then I'll show you if I take it out now, which is still way past where I want it to be. There's no color to the crust. The bottom's nice. It's actually a little burnt. But now the cheese is already at that point where it's far beyond it. And this is a low moisture mozzarella. This isn't even cured a lot, that mozzarella. It takes a little higher moisture. So, I, gotta, I gotta get used to launching that peel. I keep hitting the back wall. Yeah, I just... Uh... I guess the size of it. You're used to a actual legit oven. <laughs> yeah. This is. I mean, this could be a good. Couple, it, oven. I mean, the bottom cooks great. I, I, 
I bet it's better for a New York style pizza. Right. Where it's supposed to stay in there longer. Right. You, you need to take your time. Whereas we're trying to make this work for Neapolitan. Yeah. I mean, each pie is taking what about three minutes or so around there. We probably should get a exact timing. Yeah, we should time it. Uh, I'm sure we can probably look at the video and see yeah. exactly how long it took. So it's still some of the pie is good, but it's just the cheese. It's just all the fat separated from it, and that's just not a Neapolitan pizza. We're yeah. ashamed of that. So I mean, we're gonna try to play around with it some more and see what can be done to alleviate some of that. We got a few more dough balls to test with. Yeah, this top coil, I mean, if there was just a way to make that like go into like a boost mode or hotter temp, um, it just, the cycling on and off is really annoying. Let's lower the bottom temperature because it burned, I mean, that's black. Yeah. That's way too hot. Lower the bottom. Keep the top on, maybe? So you lowered the bottom to around 600? Yeah. Okay. We'll see how that goes. Okay. All right. So we'll, uh, well, Mike will prep another dough ball, and we'll come back with next results. I believe we're on our, what is that? That's, that's pie? Uh, yep. That's okay. five. So we'll experiment some more, and if we have good luck, we'll try to update you guys on what we tried and what worked well and what didn't and again the taste of the pizza is great taste wise what would you say mike i mean i think it's up to par similar to when i'm cooking it in my oven right. which is a wood burning oven but it's just uh texture wise is definitely different and the cook of it might as well watch some uh expert Dough pressing. I don't know what it's called. What is this called? Mm, stretching the dough out. Dough stretching. There you go. As you can tell, I'm I don't know, to know a whole lot about pizza. Trying to keep it a little smaller. All right, so we'll come back and uh, we'll tell you what the results are with this time 600 on the lower upper, keeping it at max. And seeing what happens. Alrighty, so we are back, and so far we haven't had a whole lot of changes or luck in getting it to not separate. Yeah, one with the bigger chunks. Uh, As you can tell, we've gone better? through a lot of experimentation. But then again, I had to pull it out. So yeah, let's go the over dose, that, that bigger chunk. Uh, I want to leave it in there a little longer. Just get a little more color, but the cheese just started separating, even with the big chunks. So what? So I'm going to go with bigger chunks. Yeah. What we were thinking is because we were using smaller slices of the mozzarella, they're, I think you thin typically... Thin sliced. And right, they're thin sliced. The like Julian's surface style. area is just so small that the heat just kind of decimates that cheese and you overcook it. So Mike's now trying larger kind of chunks of and cheese. we shut the oven off and we shut it off so now it's so that was the element as soon as we turn it on the top elements full right so With right now you're trying it at a lower 600 degree 600 base because before it burned the bottom before the top was cooked right so are we going to try to do the annoying part which is bake it for a minute just the crust with the sauce Take it out and then put the cheese on it and see what that does. And put it back in. <laughs> or do we just go with the bigger chunks of cheese? Let's try the bigger chunks of cheese. All right. Let's do we have a sample of... Oh, yeah, you still have the old uh, sliced cheese. Right? Yeah, so this is... So this is what we were working with before. So That's what I normally use. It's just strips. cut up into little strips, yeah. So now... Going with bigger chunks. I wish I had more of a peel piece of cheese instead of somewhat sliced I mean, it's already. Initial testing. So, yeah. You know. All right. So that's preheating. 
So we turned it back on. Uh, so what's the upper set to? Because right now eight hundred, I believe. Okay, so eight hundred there, and that's six hundred. Let's say four minutes to preheat to get to that temp. All right, so we're gonna do one take. Yeah, this might be a unnecessarily long video, but we're trying to do some, you know, troubleshooting with this. Figure out what's the best method for Neapolitan. Yeah, I'm just going straight in with it. Right on oh, and big I had chunks. It sitting on a paper towel to try to get a lot of the moisture out. It's a lot of cheese, but <laughs> it is a lot of cheese. It's a, it's a trial for uh, see how it melts. Is that the last of our big chunks? Yeah. Okay. So if this big chunk method doesn't work, then we will try the annoying take it out halfway. Then put the cheese. I'm going to put a little olive oil on the crust to see if that helps the coloring. Nice. So how do you feel about the peel that comes with the oven? Also interesting. <laughs> I mean, again, you, you've you been doing this for a while in a professional setting. Yeah, it's With fine. professional equipment. For it works. A home pizza maker. Yeah. I it's think good. it's it doable. works. Yeah. It's all that matters. How'd you do with the back this time? I hit it again. You hit the back? Yep. <laughs> Mike just keeps hitting the back. That's Can't okay. judge it. <laughs> it's okay. It's hard to tell how deep it is. It's not a problem to hit the back wall every time, right? <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to keep this PG. All right, so we're going to go through the full bake. Uh, again, you can probably fast forward through this if you want. But let's see what's going on with the top element. So as you can tell, top element is not on. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, but it's saying it's preheating. So I think between the bottom element and the top, they're just... The sensor, I think, is just reading just overall temperature. I don't know if it's a good thing, bad thing, but... I want to see if I can move it up. Bad idea, but okay. this is going to be kind of squared in the back. So I hit the wall. <laughs> it's a square pie. Is it not on still? I mean, it's no color. It's on the uh, highest level. Yeah, it's preheating, so. I mean, the you have the lower set to 600 right now, so the bottom should be good. Do you think the top is turning off because it doesn't want to overshoot the lower temperature sensor? Or, I mean, we're all just guessing at this uh, point. Yeah, I have no idea. Cheese is still big. It's intact. <laughs> big blob. Big blobs of cheese. Okay, now it's showing it's That's at temp. temp. So that means the upper is reading 800, lower is around 600. But we're still not seeing that color on the crust yet, right? No. I mean, we're getting there, but... Yeah, I wish there was a way to just keep that top running. The cheese is still decent, though. Yeah, that top one's just not on. It just doesn't want to... That's the issue. And I think it's turning back on, but yeah, I just... 
The radiant heat is hot enough because it's cooking the dough, it's cooking the cheese and the sauce, right? but there's just not enough direct heat onto it, which would come from that element to give it the color. And the cheese is still intact. But again, plenty of bubbling in there. Now, does that happen in a typical wood fire oven? Like you see that one bubbling? No. Okay. And what temperatures would you be running the wood fire? Uh, I try to get the the base minimum seven hundred, the stone at least seven to seven fifty, but then the air temperature of the oven is anywhere from nine hundred to a thousand degrees at the flame. Oh, okay. So it's quick. It's only a minute, minute and a half. So the cheese doesn't have a chance to do this. Is it doing the thing again? Yeah. All right. So now big blob idea. I mean, it's still. A singular blob, but <laughs> it's it will start to do that separation that we've been seeing. The crust is starting to kind of get there. It's getting a little color. Yeah. I want to take it out just because of the crust. Let's see. Come on, Chefman. Let's go for some kind of a boost. I mean, that looks almost more. Yeah, I mean. Again, it's also a higher moisture mozzarella, which isn't great. Right. So for the non-pizza experts, you can get mozzarella with different moisture content. Yeah. And I think if you're doing it in New York style, this would be decent. Right. Because it's just about the coloring, um, the texture, because it's in there so much longer. Right. The texture of it is more New York style. It's a much crispier. There's the squared edge because I hit the back wall. <laughs> we'll call that the Sicilian. I mean, it's definitely a lot less cheese separation. Yeah. There's got to so. be, let's hear the crunch on it. How did the the bottom look? Oh, it looks crispy. It's got a good crisp to it. Again, I think that's why it'd be good for New York. Bottom's good. Yep. I would like more color on the bottom. But then I also turned it down to 600 yeah. to kind of make up for it. A lot of trial and error. So if if the bottom, let's say, were to be brought to like around 700, that's typically where that's, you keep your base, yeah, right? Yeah, the 700 is probably good. So 700 would probably get us the right color. You want to do big blobby cheese. Um, the top element, it is what it is. We can't really keep forcing it to stay on. Again, if that they, top element hit, let's say, 900, right. it would probably be better. I mean, I'm sure it's, it's getting up there in temperature. It's just it gives away on the heat halfway into cooking sometimes to just turn yeah. it off. So I say in the next video we'll do like a New York style. Show them how good of a New York style you can do with this thing. Yeah. I mean, we can do what? You want to do the annoying method? See if that does anything? Well, now we're at, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean as, as much as you don't want to. <laughs> So the annoying method is something Mike has been avoiding wanting to do. It's uh, essentially put the sauce, do everything but the cheese, put it in. What would you say, about a minute in? Put the cheese on or a little bit I later? would even let it go longer. Yeah, like a minute and a half? Yeah, at this point. So then I guess we can use a timer at that point. We'll do a minute and a half of just the dough with the sauce. And then, yes, take it out, put the cheese on, and then put it back in until the cheese is ready. All so right. we're just going sauce. Yeah, sauce. And I'll do a little olive oil and have it cook a little quicker. I don't even want to throw the basil on yet. Yeah. 
Let's let's see. Let's see what happens. This might pop up. You think? <laughs> it's just it's just so sacrilegious. To the purists out there, I think Mike would like to apologize for what yeah, he's about I, to do. I'm sorry. Maybe I don't hit the back wall this time. <laughs> hey, you know, happens with old age. Yeah, you go. Starting to get a hang of her. Like, well, well, we haven't really gotten a hang of her. She's doing an updated video of the real oven. Oh, of your, your, yeah, your actual full on uh, trailer oven. Oh, yeah, shit, that's, uh, that's not good. Oh, it's still preheating. Oop, can't use a timer while well, it's preheating. Cool. Uh, let's just, let's just guesstimate. So, yeah, you guys could definitely skip all of this. I might cut some of this out, but you're getting to see trial and error, the annoyance of trying to figure out how to use the consumer. It's All right, let's so see. You, it's been it's been a little less than a minute. Oh, yeah, since you put it in. Cuz I'm looking at the time on the video recording. Let's say about like 20 more seconds would give you about a minute and a half. I think it'll be good then. Okay. I mean, you if you by the looks of it, if you want to take it out now and No, no, no. no? All right, now you're at a, about a minute and a half now. Full minute? Minute and a half? Yeah, a minute and a half, yeah. Okay, let's... Science. I already did the elbow. All right. More of a Canoto style Nepal pen with a bigger crust. I don't know what that means. It's a bigger I'm just, crust. I'm going to trust you on that. So I need to know. Pinocchio style. I like that. What's that mean, Pinocchio style, Mike? I don't know. Pinocchio style, but Canoto style is <laughs> a bigger crust. Bigger crust. That's okay. it. Just like a thick, breadier crust. I mean, it still light, looks very Neapolitan ish. Yeah. It's still Neapolitan. Right. It's just a different style of Neapolitan. Airier, a little bigger crust. I mean, keep in mind, anytime you open that door, you're releasing all that hot air mass. So you're definitely affecting it. But hopefully this method of taking it out and putting it back in, it's not ideal at all. But for a home setting, I think it's something that... If you really want to hone in on it, that's the way to do it. Maybe. I should have waited. Waited a little longer? Yeah. That's essentially where I'd want it to be. In one cook. Obviously circular. Yeah, so you see... So that's the process. Yeah, the it's cheese is still intact. Soft, it's crunchy. Base looks good. Cheese is intact. Yeah. So, big blobs, again, not terrible. That one, not better. terrible. Better. It's better, better yeah. Right. We didn't get, like, I mean, even the separation on here is not terrible. No. But, like, on the previous ones, you can see that the cheese just starts to... What were you saying? The fat separates? Yeah, the fat starts to separate. And that's what you can see kind of... I don't know how to describe like it's it. Like, like it becomes, like, noodly almost. Yeah, webbed. Right. It's just like a web. Or over here... And this, I even want this to be longer, just for the coloring of the crust. But so then, that could be, I guess, worked out if the lower temp was just moved up a bit more. 
again, this is an annoying method to do. I have to take it out, put the cheese in, and then. But this is because you're particular and you make pizza in an actual oven. Yeah. For, again, home users, I think the taste is very, very close. It's You could still tell the difference to a trained you know, tongue, but for 98% of people, this oven is it's going to hit the mark, especially for home use. Um, just don't bring any pizza pros around you because they will make fun of you. So what would you what would you say is kind of a final verdict now that we've kind of ran out of dough balls? Um, am I going honesty here? Honesty, yeah. I mean, again, remember this for for people looking to buy this to use at home. What would you say? I think for somebody who's not used to making pizza or is getting into it, the less you do, the better. Right. So to add another step in there to have to take it out, to kind of bar cook it, then take it out and add more cheese to it, it just kind of, it's a simple step, but it just is adding another step to it. Right. Compared to just topping it and throwing it in. But that's for you because you are noticing the the webbing thing happening. Yeah, the taste is still going to be there. Right. But if you're also trying to go for the look of it, or maybe even just more of a New York style pizza. Right. This would be good for New York style for a low moisture mozzarella. Like a grande mozzarella. Or like but I think the big blobby way was probably... It's a, better. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a good... If you're looking for a true Neapolitan pizza, like as authentic as you could be, yeah, even new, trying to get to that point, it's good to start, but then you're going to want to... You're going to have to step it up to a better oven fairly quickly. Yeah. And what's, what's odd is like what's available out there doesn't go any higher in temperature it's just the features that they have are going to be different we really wish this thing had a ability to keep that top element on it just the way it cycles is just very annoying it's on now so that's good it's, it's almost like you have to time it where you see when it's on and you throw the pie in at that point but I wish there was a way to kind of have it signal that it's running as long as you use the right ingredients, it's right. going to taste great. It's just texture-wise, um, coloring, which also affects the flavor, the coloring, right. right? It changes the flavor of the dough. But as a base, as long as you have a specific dough recipe you like, certain tomatoes, as long as it's good quality tomatoes, it's going to taste good. It's just not I mean, for my, I guess from my unprofessional pizza opinion of somebody that just eats Neapolitan, Taste wise, I think it was very good. Um, you, yes, to kind of a trained tongue, and because I've had so much Neapolitan, I can tell slightly. But yeah, like you said, ingredients—if they're good ingredients—it's gonna be indistinguishable from. So you know, a little pale on the bottom. Yeah, just a little more color. Maybe like another minute in there without putting the cheese on top. Right. Would have been right. All right. So definitely a good pizza oven. As far as ratings, for me, I would probably give it a six and a half, seven, six and a half out of ten. What would you rate the oven? Um, I've never used an electric oven for Neapolitan pizza. I'm going with a six. Yeah. You know, every time I've used one, it's always a flame. Yeah. Which gives it a better look. I think that's the issue with our opinion is that we haven't used an electric one right. before. Right, so I don't know how it's it hard to gauge it. Yeah, with other ones. But as far as the taste goes, I mean, it taste is your ingredients. So it's for delicious. me, yeah, for me, these pies are, you know, eight and a half, nine almost out of ten for taste. Presentation is different. Presentation is definitely different. Yeah. All right, so we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, I'll cut up this video to get rid of some of the annoying uh, long bits, but that's that's the cooking review so far. All right, guys. Thanks, and I'll put the link for Mike's website uh, on the description and whatever else I can put down there.